Good day, everyone. Welcome to today's match preview for the first ODI in the CG United Insurance Series powered by Gold Medal. Today, we have the West Indies white ball captain, Nicholas Puran, available to speak with you in the media. Uh, Puran, a lot of rain again. I understand your practice today was uh, cancelled due to the weather. Does that make the toss again uh, a very big one in this series? Uh, Chasing would be the, the better option given the amount of rain once again ahead of the series. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I think we need to obviously have a look at the wicket in, in the morning. Um, the wicket did look good yesterday when we practiced on it. Practice next day, sorry. Um, just really nice. But again, it's just we need to ask us and obviously what the conditions are, whether it's gonna whether it's looking like it's gonna rain or not. I think yeah, batting second might be a really good option as well. But in order for that to happen, we need to win the toss. Yeah, you haven't had that luck. Look, these matches aren't a part of the, of the Super League, but still, you know, you're playing one of the top teams in the world of cricket. Coming off a series against Bangladesh, what would you want to see the guys execute in these matches? I, I know there's any pressure for points per se, but still, you know, you're, you're playing one of the, the top sides in world cricket. Yeah, for me, um, I just want to see the guys continue to fight both bat and ball. I think the last the last one they gave me play against Bangladesh in tough conditions, we obviously tried our best and we felt like we had a chance to win the game and we almost did. And for this India series, just was a fight, dig deep and just fight as long as possible as we can. And and you never know if you can stay in a fight as long as possible, things can happen for us. So just that fight. I want to see that fight from every individual on the team. Thank you, Akim. Roger C. Persan, and I'm asking that if you have questions to please show. Otherwise, after Roger's two questions, I will be heading to the WhatsApp question. Uh, thanks, Dario. Hi, Nicholas. Um, you know, after the couple of defeats against Bangladesh, there, um, do you feel any pressure mounting on you to deliver wins in this series? I don't know, I guess the pressure is always on to win cricket games, but I, I, we as a team, we're definitely not feeling any pressure in terms of winning. I think we understand as a young group, we know for a fact that we obviously, you know, we are building to something. Uh, that's the World Cup next year. Uh, we just got together as a young group and it's for us to understand how we cricket a bit more, understand, you know, what's the right template to, to play. Um, so, no, not really. I don't think the pressure is on us to win. We just believe in just doing the right things for longer periods of time and the results will take care of itself. Yes, we do want to win, but you don't just you know, say you want to win and, ex and then go on a cricket field and win cricket games. It's difficult, especially being against teams that are playing ODI cricket really good. Um, we need to put in the hard work. So, again, we just need to hang in there. Um, well, in terms of well, the ODI defeats, so how have they caused you to kind of second guess your tactics or your approach in terms of your captaincy? Um, you know, I always sit and I reflect. Obviously, that's, that's something big on me. Um, yeah, I do try to get better as a leader where I can get better, and especially you know, being a batsman, being a bowler now, or even on the cricket field, making decisions. Uh, well, no tactics. Um, I definitely obviously question it a lot because I'm going to get better. Um, so I don't want to dig into it too much, to be honest. It's just you know, the ODI series. We lost two and win one. Um, hopefully we can win this one here and it can even off things a bit. Um, but I'm not questioning it too much at this moment. And well, as captain, um, how, how do you like, keep the players motivated heading into this series against India coming off of all those defeats? Um, I think all the players are motivated. Um, everyone wants to do well, and that's really that's really fantastic to see. Um, so I don't have to do much to be honest. We just need to ha to have really good competition. Our team continue to believe in each other and continue to you know, back our skills. Um, I think the guys are chilling really well at the moment. We know for a fact in the back of our minds, yes, we want to win cricket games, and everyone is doing everything necessary to you know perform on the cricket field. The guys are working really hard, and that's commendable. But you know, we'll only see we'll only see on the cricket field and. That's, that's our focus. Our focus is to, you know, go on a cricket field and actually, you know, perform. Uh, just one more from me. Um, in terms of leading the team, there's the first time leading the team in the home venue at the Oval and leading the team there for the first time. Um, how do you feel about that? I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward to the opportunity. Again, the fans, the fans came out and obviously supported us in Dominica and Diana. I expect the fans to come out here and support us as well. Um, it will be a great feeling for me. I'm looking for the challenge. Hopefully, you know, can make this a memorable one for us. Thanks for that. Good luck. Before we go to Brandon Toilet, I'm just going to jump to a question that I have on WhatsApp because it's relevant to answer that Nicholas just gave. 
Nicholas, you're the captain of the team. You are the main batsman in the side. You've contributed recently with the ball, and it wouldn't be strange if you had the wicket keep during the series as well. How challenges? How challenging is it to juggle multiple roles within the West Indies setup? Well, it's, again, we're professionals, and you know, we have our jobs to do. I think that's my job. Yes, now as a part-time spinner, now that's something I'm actually enjoying. Um, I don't think it's, it's too much, but for the other guys, I know they have been playing a lot of crickets and it's important for the, these guys to recover well. And with the, with the schedule, it's so busy. And my my obviously, it's really important for us to look after our players as well. You see all, a lot of our players are getting a lot of niggas and that's, that's something we need to keep our eyes on. And I think, you know, being both, being both batsman and bowler, with the amount of workload, obviously, that puts a strain on the body. So we just need to be careful and look after our players. Brandon Carter. Hi there, Skipper. Just an update on Kimo Paul. Is he fit to play tomorrow? Um, I think the doctors are still monitoring Kimo. At this point in time, I can't really say. We'll make a decision on him in the morning. But you know, I hope he's well and I hope he's available for tomorrow's game. All right, one more question. In terms of the batting group, we know the group is a bit inexperienced when it comes to one day international. Are you confident that this batting group will do better against a stronger opponent in India? Again, I'll take the opposition away from it and I'll, I'll go based on conditions. Once the conditions are well, um, good, you know, I expect our guys to you know, put up some good scores with the bat. Even if the conditions are bad, I expect our guys to fight. Now, at the end of the day, it's all about us getting better as a team. And you know, it doesn't really matter the opposition, to be honest. We as a group know exactly what we need to do, whether it's Netherlands or it's Pakistan, India. We know if we want to be a better team, we need to perform against every single you know, opposition. And that's what, we're looking, that's what we're looking forward to do. Go well tomorrow. Thank you. Yeah, I'm seeing an indication from Ian's iPad. I'm thinking that's Ian Bishop. Please proceed. Yeah, Nicholas, good afternoon. Um, just a thought on, you, you mentioned that last one, the international against Bangladesh. What was the, what were the things that you learned as a group from a batting perspective? As a group, we felt like, you know, in international cricket, 90 games, we can't really control certain things. And for us, I felt the, the biggest learning is for us to, you know, believe that we could fight. You know, it doesn't matter the conditions. You know, we need to assess as players really quickly and understand that, you know, if it's difficult for us, then it should be difficult for the opposition as well. For us as a batting group, we just need to hang in there as long as possible on tough conditions and tough times. And, you know, just believe that whatever we got, you know, it's respectable and it's, it's given us a chance in the game. That's the, most, that's the most we could ask of ourselves. I think, you know, Ghana have been challenging for us, but we have also learned a lot. You know, being there as a group, you know, coming from Pakistan as well, then into the Bangladesh series, I think the results isn't in our favor, but as a new group, this is this is our challenges and this is our journey. And you know, as I always tell you guys, no story ever starts well. And you know, it has started, it has started so far in ODI cricket. But I believe in the guys, I believe in the talent we have here and the willingness of these guys to learn. You know, that's that's really nice. And you know, the conversations are really good in the dressing room, and everyone wants to get better, everyone is asking questions, everyone is asking how to get better and you know that's something i admire about the guys so far you know coming from bangladesh series and you know, we're just looking forward to you know, some things going our way because the guys have been putting in a lot of work and you know we're looking forward to this industry to correct some rights and wrongs uh, finally uh, I, I know that the question came a, a little while ago about chemo paul what can you tell me if tell us if anything with hetmeyer traveling with the team to trinidad where is his fitness levels at and down the road um, when do you see him making a contribution? Oh, obviously, love him to be in this ODI series now, but obviously, yeah, he's here doing a lot of work on his fitness as well, and he has been doing, he has been putting in a lot of work, and that's really nice to see his the effort he has been putting in. He wants to play for Westernies, and um, the trainer is working with him, the coaches are working with him. So you know, I expect to see him sooner than later. Um, I have full confidence that he'll be putting on the morning again. You know, closer than into. <laughs> Sorry, so just to be clear, his presence here is, is just fitness work oriented. Yeah, I think he has a fitness test to pass as well coming up shortly. So he's preparing himself for that. Thank you very much, Nicholas. Yeah. Joel Bailey. Yeah, hi, good afternoon. Hope, hope, hope you all is well. 
Yes, I'm here the Oval. It's still raining, but look, I think maybe easing up. I just want to ask a question to Mr. Puran himself concerning the spin options you have. I noticed that you have been putting in a lot of bowling, which is commendable. You also have Moti, you have Aki Hussein. But the World Cup will be played in India, which is a spin-oriented place. And we still haven't heard much about Fabian Allen. We don't know if Rustan Chase has fallen off the radar. He watches a reserve. Do you think that this, uh, looking at what happened against Bangladesh, that you might have been a, you might have missed a trick in not picking in the team selector, not picking extra spin out too, especially knowing that you will be playing in spinning oriented conditions. Thanks so much. Yeah, I guess as a group we we could have picked another spinner in hindsight. Um, unfortunately, we didn't. Um, we saw the importance of obviously having an all spinner or in, in the team. Um, yeah, with the World Cup in India, I think you know having another spinner in the setup is really valuable. And the selectors and the coaches, they are they are obviously looking for other spinners as well. So the I guess the process have started, you know, looking for other spinners as well. Because at the moment we just have two, three, four spinners. Rustan, well, Rustan is not in the setup at the moment. He then Akil and Moti. But again, everyone can play at the same time. So and I believe I do believe that these guys will get opportunities. Um, CPL is coming up as well, so we we'll, we we'll have an opportunity to see other spinners as well. And that's a good call. You know, the World Cup is, is definitely been in India. So another spinner, you know, getting another spinner in our setup is really valuable. Akim Green. Uh, Puran, there's a lot of talk about brand of cricket and uh, ODI cricket a bit uh, falling away, given uh, Test cricket has been Premier cricket and a lot of T20 leagues as well around the world. I want to get your, your, your thoughts on where does ODI cricket rank for you? Uh, given that you're the his white ball uh, skipper. And the second part would be, what about the brand of cricket you want to see the West Indies play in fifth over cricket especially? Um, I guess from my side, um, not only from my side, but and I can speak from the coaching side as well. You know, our focus is to balance, you know, balance ODI cricket between T20 and West cricket. I think we haven't found the right template yet. And everyone, that's, everyone can see that we're not batting 50 over and that's, as, as a first box, we want to take. So at the moment, when you ask me what brand of cricket you know, we want to play in ODI cricket, it's it's difficult to say yet because if you want to play a certain cricket, you can, I, I say, if you want to just say, for example, you want to play aggressive cricket, it's difficult to play aggressive aggressive cricket on tough conditions. So for us now, it's all about finding ways to bat 50 overs first. It doesn't matter how we bat 50 overs, but our goal is to bat 50 overs. I believe conditions do play a part in how we play cricket. As a team that is obviously now starting and now understanding how we need to go about OEI cricket, it's important for us to you know, stick one box at a time, one step at a time. At, um, I believe in T20 cricket, we're starting to you know, know what kind of cricket we want to play in test cricket, the same thing. And uh, The more games we play as a unit in ODI cricket, I think we're going to get better. A lot of guys are going to have more games under the belt. They're going to have more experience and more confidence as well. So I think this question, you know, it'd be nice. You know, I can answer this question maybe after the next series, New Zealand series. You know, going by how conditions is and how the guys you know are reacting to certain situations as well. Thanks, sir. I'm just gonna hop about the two WhatsApp questions that I have here from Nearika from New Delhi, India. She's asking, can you shed some light on the batting targets which would have been discussed between yourself and the coaches in ODIs, especially in batting 50 overs and switching partnerships together? Yeah, when we talk about you know, obviously batting goals, the obvious goal is batting 50 overs. But the question, the real question is, how are we going to bat 50 overs? Um, a lot of our batsmen have been getting out softly, obviously, not they're not getting a start. But first is when our batsmen are in, you know, they make the best out of it. Um, you know, Hopi, when he gets in, he bats for a long time. Shoma Brook shows potential that he can bat for a while. Um, even Kyle Mears, even Brandon King, myself. But it's for us to play as a group now and you know, just have those partnerships. I think I believe in ODI cricket, the most important thing is partnerships, um, communication between your partner, and just figure out a way to you know win periods for longer periods of time. And that's it. Just winning, just winning moments, winning moments for longer periods. Jason Hall is back for the West Indies white ball matches. How pleasing is it for you to have a premier all rounder like him fresh and available for the ODIs? I'm definitely looking forward to it. Um, you know, Jason has been wonderful for us. I know when it comes to white ball cricket as well, he he wants to do well. Um, and with him coming back into the team here now, you know, he brings that experience, which is something we need, we really need as well. Um, 
he obviously offers a lot with the bat and the ball and you know looking forward to just see how he goes about it you know we'll be leaning on him as well to give us some match winning performances we'll go to junior carlin junior this was here captain good afternoon awesome um how how are you mentally prepared to assert yourself against this indian team as the west indies captain because um when your former captain was here pollard he used to encourage you to go at number three to take responsibility are you prepared to to do that if necessary in this series so are you saying that i don't take responsibility by batting at number five are you asking me that no captain but <laughs> I mean, I'm always, I'm always big on obviously you know, rising to the occasion and um, you know taking the opportunity when it presents itself. Um, you know, if the team requires me to bat at number three, you know, I'm 100% for the team, and you know, I guess everyone would know that. Um, at the end of the day, I'll do anything to get a victory for us, and that's my intention. You know, so that's just where I stand. Absolutely, thank you. Brother. Question from Chris Linjay from Indian Media. The question is going into the three match ODI series. What do you view as the role of Shea Ho? Obviously, the batting performance is sometimes centered around Shea. And how do you think we can maximize his ability in this team? Oh, it's simple. <laughs> Shea just needs to bat like Shea Ho. That's as simple as it gets. You know, he has a freedom to do. You know what he does. What he, what he does best, which is to just bat and bat. You know, we doesn't we don't question. How he scores his runs, you know, he has a freedom to about 50 overs. And you know, we we as a club obviously spoke about him batting. And when he do get set, we know what he what he's capable of. He's averaging 50 plus. And you know, we're not gonna stress on that. You know, once he gets in, he does a job for the team. So again, once he do get a start, you know, we expect him to continue to do the good work for us. Thank you all for taking time out to join today's press conference. Thank you, Skipper, for taking time out to answer the questions. Looking forward to hosting you all again soon. Thank you guys.